All right, Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide. A heart of Shalom to the believers out there who's believing on the words of Yahweh, Bahashim, Shai. And this lesson is going to be entitled The Shadow of a Once Feared Technology Looms Large. All right. And uh, it's part of the um, a title of this article that I seen the other day uh, on Salon.com. says, Radio Frequency Identification, the Shadow of a Once Feared Technology Looms Large. All right. says, In the mid-2000s, RFID drew criticism from privacy experts and became the target of far-right conspiracies all right and this article was done march 8th 2020 year of prophecy now um if you know anything you know uh when the apostles <clears throat> hit the internet basically youtube in 2007 all right it was proclaimed that the RFID microchip is the mark of the beast, which it is, all right? And uh, through the spirit, you know, we're going to go through this article, and you're going to see um, in that that year how things were, uh, matter of fact, let's just get into it, all right? It says, you'd be forgiven if you haven't heard of radio frequency identification. It says, a technology that in the mid 2000s, uh, it's, it elicited worldwide, uh, elicited Salakia worldwide boycotts from consumer and privacy groups, got tied up in a far right conspiracy about Obamacare, and was even feared to be the sign of Antichrist by some evangelical Christians. All right, so even these bugged out Christians know that this is the mark of the beast because it. I had did an article, um, a video a while back, uh, maybe a month ago, uh, where uh, this doctor, you know, for NYU, New York uh, University, was talking about all these different uses, you know, that this would be for, all right, you know, for buying and selling for uh, having your medical records, you know, uh, even um, tagging uh, prisoners, you know, who, who who wants to be released early, all right? These are things that Esau is going to offer certain people, even from, uh, said, even from uh, tagging your child in this article, you know what I'm saying, to ensure that the right baby goes with the right parent. All right, and and we know that's just a smoke screen for Esau to what try and get his birthright back. But going on, found in everything from cars moving through electronic tolls to contactless subway cards to tag items in supply chains. Yeah, and uh, Apostle Taha was talking about how uh, they go through uh, the speed pass, you know, and is uh, is is already in your car. You'll pay seven dollars at the toll. Or you'll pay two dollars for the for the speed pass, and that's part of what Esau making it convenient, right? So when the time comes for him to implement this chip, it it'll be convenient, all right, for for people to try and take it, all right. But scripture says if you take this, you will be destroyed. But going on, it says RFID refers to a suite of identification technologies used to wirelessly identify people and things you see that domestic pets have rfid tags injected in their bodies so they can be identified some humans even inject rfid in their hands to replace access cards or credit cards says in other words rfid tags are everywhere all right now, going down, I read some here. It is right here. It says, one of the ironies in that the, the amount of public attention and tags received in the mid-2000s 
right? When the apostles and elders got on, you know, YouTube, right? It says, seem to be uh, inversely proportionate to how many RFID tags were actually in use. For example, most prominent protests occur occurred during the period and Google searches of RFID peaked around 2007. Why is that? All right. Why Why would those searches peak in 2007? Well, that's when the apostles, starting with Apostle Zahar and elders, got on YouTube, man. Nothing is by coincidence, man. Yahweh by Shah Shah controls everything. All right. It says, but at that point, the technology was still in its relative infancy, right? At least in retail and logistics. You see that? It says at least in retail and lo in, in logistics, meaning uh, as far as buying and selling and the the thing of tagging people and pets, right? Logistics. It says now we are at the point where RFID where RFID has has finally begun to achieve some of its predicted potential, but the public attention has all but disappeared outside the occasional story about China mandating RFID car tagging or a company offering voluntary RFID injections. The technology rarely enters the public conversation. Right? Why? Because Esau now is trying to lure people to sleep about this technology. All right? It says, but that was not always the case. And looking back at the controversies can be informative for the technology, for the future of the technology. After all the aspects of RFID people were concerned about in the mid-2000s, have not disappeared right it says rfid history traces back to the early days of radar but the technology did not begin to get much attention until 1999 right that year the term internet of things was coined at the meeting about using rfid to tag individual items all right. Within a few years, Walmart announced mandates to tag all their items with RFID and other companies explored similar projects. At one point in the early 2000s, it looked like RFID tags might someday replace barcodes and looks like it as the primary way of items are identified in supply chains and retail settings. Right. However, the industry faced a few problems. One tag, so like you, for one, tags often didn't work quite as well as hope. Secondly, it faced scrutiny, scrutiny from a tenuous consumer group called Consumers Against Supermarket Privacy Invis in Invasion and Numbering, who took notice to the technology spread, right? And I'm not going to read this whole article, all right? It was mainly what I wanted to get into was how, you know, in 2007, it was this greatest influx of information being done, right, by Google searches. Why? Because the apostles and elders, right, got on YouTube and was starting to warn the people about what's coming. All right, and, and now Esau is trying to let this uh, information die down, as this article said. Why? So he can automatically let this dollar crash, because we see what's going on right now with this coronavirus. We see what's going on with this stock market, uh, how this bubble, the dollar bubble, is about to burst. All right, let's get into the scriptures. Let's go, and we already know Revelation, right? We know Revelation 13, and we're going to get that, Lord willing. This is Habakkuk 2 and verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. 
And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run the read of it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. You see that? It's not going to tarry, man. This vision, the, these uh, these prophecies are going to come to pass in due time. All right? Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. I'm going to start at verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a lovely, as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can, and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, then they shall know that a prophet hath been among them. Yeah. And when this thing is being mandated, guess what? Everybody going to know. That the apostles of GMS are the prophets of the Lord. All right, everybody's going to realize that. All right, and, and it's going to be cut, cut dry in that day, because these things are going to surely come to pass. All right, it's just too much information out there for you not to be able to spiritually discern these things. All right, now let's go, let's go to the scripture. All right, Salakia, in Revelations. Right, this is Revelation chapter thirteen and verse sixteen. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark of the beast or the number of his name, right? So that letting you know right there, man, this mark of the beast, which is karagma, right, which actually means what? Uh, yeah. matter of fact, let's get it, man. We ain't gotta talk about it. Let's get it. Let's go to that word mark, karagma, which means the imprinted mark, incision. It goes back to that word karax, right? Look up words, man. Strong's G fifty four eighty, karagma. Karagma. All right, Karagma. A stamp, an imprinted mark of the mark stamp on the forehead or the right hand, right, as a badge of the followers of the anti Hamashiach and his many anti Hamashiachs, right? So, this is letting you know, matter of fact, let's go to uh, Revelation 14 because this is a reward if you take that mark, right? Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast of, it's like if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. See that? And the smoke of their torment ascend up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark in his name. And that's what's waiting on them, man. All right, you receive that mark, that's what's waiting on you. All right, you 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 take that RFID market ship, you're going to be tormented with fire. All right, that thermonuclear fire. That's going to be it for the lesson. Lord willing, it's been edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide and a hearty shalom and salutations. To the believers out there who's believing on the words of Yahweh by Shah Shah in truth and sincerity. Lord willing, come to you with another lesson. Till the next time I say, Shalom.